to the Alexandrian Codex. I'm Alex. Uh, it's been a while, right? Um, this is not Stellaris, which I think at the last thing we were playing, this is Knights of the Old Republic, uh, which is a very old game, one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, not a uh, unpopular thing to say. Yeah, I've been gone a month. Um, there was some family stuff going on. Uh, I've changed offices, which you can probably hear if there's an echo. We're working on it. I'm still soundproofing this a little bit, but it's been a month, so I figured I might as well get back into it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's just hop in here. I'm not going to put the cart before the horse too much. This is a uh, fairly old school style RPG. In, in fact, if I'm remembering correctly, the uh, this game is just a reskinned second or three, third edition Dungeons and Dragons. It uses D and D rules, which I did not appreciate at all as a kid. Uh, and I played through this game many, many times. What do I want to play? There's three classes. You can either get it. The, use a female or Mao character. Um, I played soldiers a lot as a kid because that's kind of hard to fuck up and it synergizes okay with spoilers you turn into a Jedi later on, hence Knights of the Old Republic. Scout? I remember being okay. Scoundrel? Ah, okay. What I'm trying to remember is which one of these classes gets the most bonuses to skills, because honestly that's what I'm most interested in early on. Soldier gets a lot of feats, I remember. Scout? Fuck. <laughs> Let's go Scoundrel. I think Scoundrel is widely regarded as the worst, but I can't remember. So first let's pick out a lovely... Lovely portrait. I think... Hold on. Hold on. This... Is the uh, pseudo-edgy haircut that I always went with? <laughs> yeah, sure. For, for nostalgia reasons, let's go with that. Attributes. I'm just gonna bump everything up to 10 so we're not terrible at anything. Charisma is important because we're the only person in our party that's ever going to be trying to persuade anyone doing any charisma checks at all, so just bump that all the way up. Uh, strength, dexterity, constitution, wisdom, they're all pretty important, but intelligence to me is more important because there are parts of this game that you are solo, you are on your own. And, oh, I didn't realize you can move this up to 18. Uh, you're on your own, and so being able to be at least sort of competent in those spaces is fairly important. Uh, I hate point buy systems. If uh, you've ever played a tabletop role playing game with me or ever talked to me about a role playing system, I fucking hate point buy, which is this you have points and you buy your attributes off of that. I hate it. I wish there were a way to just roll for your skills or attributes, but whatever. 14, 18 is probably fine. This is only a plus two, but this is more important to me. Skills. Each of your character skills has a number associated with it. This is the skill rank and determines how good the character is with that skill. When using a skill to perform an action, the rank is compared against a difficulty check. For example, when you open a lock with a DC of 15, take your skill in security plus wisdom modifier plus a d20 roll. If the total is 15 or greater, the lock is open. So computer use is gonna be decently important. Persuade's going to be very important. Security is going to be important. Demolitions will be fairly important. Awareness will be important so we can see mines. This is pretty much all that demolitions is used for. Repair is fairly useful. And treat injury is nice, but we'll get a force power later on that does the same thing, so this is meh. And stealth is a mechanic I hate, so I won't be doing that. Feats. Feats allow you to use special items like heavy armor, implants, other feats modify saving throws and skill checks during the game. Some feats, power attack, are used during combat. 
Ah, uh, God. So we start out with light armor proficiency, critical strike, sniper shot. We can use blaster pistols, rifles, melee weapons. We have a sneak attack and scoundrel's luck. This lets us wear light armor. Critical strike uh, doubles the critical threat range of melee attacks. So if a weapon needs a 20 on that d20 roll to crit, it instead becomes 19 or 20. Okay. Plus there's a stun for six seconds, unless they make a fortitude save. This is good, but it lowers our defense by five when we use and that's not great and only works with critical or er, melee weapons. Sniper shot does the same thing, right? But it's a ranged version. God, they should have just merged these into a single skill, but it, I'm not here to nitpick that much. I'm not going to buy these later proficiencies because later on, spoiler, we're going to be using lightsabers, so why would you ever want to use pistols at that point? Sneak attack adds extra damage when the target can't respond to the attacker. If the target is stunned, immobilized, oh okay, so this stacks on top of sniper shot. Not really going to make good use of that at all. Really, we're not going to make great use of any of this shit. Uh, hold on. I thought I remembered there being... Oh, well, there's Gearhead. Empathy. Okay, Empathy adds one point to Persuade, Awareness, and Treat Entry. <laughs> Not the sexiest thing in the world, but... Uh, here we go. Name. Leanne Ketra, Hala Mothma, Hala, Brayla Star, Mirabelle. Oh, Mirabelle is kind of good. Uh... Lislin Star, <laughs> Kesa Jerry, uh, Kriya Tetivor, Paula Chan. Hmm. Mm. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Padme Organ. <laughs> Sane Cora. Yeah, okay. I'll go with that. My partner's name is Cora. Sane Cora. I like it. I'll go with that. Uh, yeah. Combat is real time, but you can manually press. Mute myself. Yeah, why would this be read? Knights of the Old Republic, 4,000 years before the rise of the Galactic Empire, the Republic verges on collapse. Darth Malak, last surviving apprentice of the Dark Lord Revan, has unleashed an invincible Sith Armada upon an unsuspecting galaxy. Invincible isn't really the right word. Crushing all resistance, Malak's war of conquest has left the Jedi Order scattered and vulnerable as countless knights fall in battle, and many more swear allegiance to their new Sith Master. No, the new Sith Master. In the skies above the Outer Rim world of Taris, a Jedi battle fleet engages the forces of Darth Malak in a desperate effort to halt the Sith's galactic domination. <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Is that... Is the, the four periods at the end, is that... Is that what was actually used in the Star Wars movies? I thought it was just, uh... And actual ellipses, just three periods. But if I had gone 20 something years without noticing that, it'd be pretty impressive. Jesus Christ, I've heard this audio so many times. Oh god. We've been ambushed by a Sith battle fleet. The Endar Spire is under attack. Hurry up, we don't have much time. 
Who are you? I'm Trask Olgo, ensign with the Republic fleet. I'm your bunkmate here on the Endar Spire. We work opposite shifts. I guess that's why you haven't seen me before. Now hurry up. We have to find Bastila. We have to make sure she makes it off the ship alive. Uh, who's Bastila? is the commanding officer on the Endar Spire. Well, not an officer, really. But she's the one in charge of this mission. One of our primary duties is to guarantee her survival in the event of an enemy attack. You swore an oath just like everyone else on this mission. Now it's time to make good on that oath. I know all about your reputation. How you used to smuggle spice and blasters along the Corellian run. I guess the Republic figured since they couldn't catch you, they might as well hire you. And I'll admit, the Republic is in desperate need of someone with your kind of skills. Desperate enough to overlook your shady past. But now that you signed on for this mission, you're part of the Republic fleet. And Bastila needs all troops at her side during this attack. Uh, oath or no oath? I'm heading well, to the escape Don't be stupid. Pops. You won't stand a chance against the Sith by yourself. We gotta stick together if you wanna make it out of this alive. So hurry up and grab your gear. You need to suit up so we can get out of here. Okay. Spice. Yeah, it it's a Dune thing, but in Star Wars it's used as... Oh god, where are the controls? It's just generic drug. Man, this looks weird in the aspect ratio I have it in. Spice is just stand-in space drugs. Spice and death sticks and other garbage PG-13 nonsense. Uh, critical range is on a 20, it deals twice as much damage. This is not the most intuitive interface. Uh, oh yeah, critical threat, 2020x2. What the fuck does that mean? It, it's no surprise that as a, as a kid I had no idea what the hell I was looking at here. I know what it means now, but Christ. Uh, you get a... You get a plus two? Slash plus zero versus two weapon penalty if used in the offhand, so... No penalty, or it helps offset the offhand penalty, which... It doesn't say what the offhand penalty is, and it's probably somewhere in... No? Not in here? No. Yeah, they might... They may just not explain it. Whatever the case, I'm going with a blaster, because look at this shit. Way, way more functional. That's everything in here. All right. Okay, oh, let's God. move out. We should stick together. You'll have more success with a party than on your own. I'm definitely not going to die. Yep, yep, Trask. Yep, this is... Select that party attack, member. This room is in lockdown, but don't worry. I've got the override codes. <laughs> You'll have to use me to unlock the door. Okay, tutorial man. Now that the door is open, you better take the lead again. Am I really taking the lead if you just keep telling me what to do, Trask? A am I? Oh god. This is gonna be another game like, uh... Jade Empire. My mouse is not confined to the monitor. This is Cardinal Nassi. The Sith are threatening to overrun our position. We can't hold out long against uh, their firepower. All hands to the bridge! That was Karth contacting us on our portable communicators. He's one of the Republic's best pilots. He's seen more combat than the rest of the Endar Spire's crew put together. If he says things are bad, you better believe it. We have to get to the bridge to help defend Bastila. There's a map of the Endar Spire and a copy of Karth's message in your electronic journal, just in case we get separated. I get that you have to explain the setting and, like, get the character up to speed, because, like, especially starting a game on, you're in a ship and it's exploding and there's fighting going on, that it's important that they understand the context, but like... Oh, that's Garth, our commanding officer. Oh, Bastila, she's your commanding officer. Who did my character know this? <laughs> Isn't it really overbearing? Like, in your electronic journal. Oh yeah, we were talking to him using these pads. Like, yeah, no shit man, I could kind of put two and two together. What if instead you just showed it on the pad? It's, it's an old game with old technology, it makes sense. Alright, let's, let's go. Hello, droid. Beep, beep, bleep. On it. Done. Oh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> These Sith must be the advanced boarding party for the Republic! Yeah, we're not doing sniper shot, just normal attack. Whenever you spot an enemy, left click that, yep, yeah, left click, yep, yeah, and yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. 
definitely have played against before. And Trask is definitely. Thrilling combat. Mechanically, the game's very sound. Because the uh, the game designers didn't really go all that far in designing the game. They just straight up used Dungeons and Dragons mechanics. Which I'm not complaining about. I think it was actually a pretty shrewd decision. You don't have to constantly reinvent the wheel every time you want to make a fun role-playing game. All you did was take the Star Wars IP, slap it on top of it, turn it into a 3D action-adventure exploring exploration game. Nothing wrong with that? Your butt seems very proud. You are not wrong. I was just thinking that same thing. I, I remember... I remember this being a very male gaze type game, but not, not that much. I guess I kind of understand the philosophy of like, well, if you're staring at somebody's butt the entire time, it might as well be a nice butt. But like, I don't know. I don't know. The male character models have very square butt going on, whereas I have this strange crease in the middle, which is possibly there to imply that these are like stiff and tight. I, I don't know. To be fair. Jade Empire, which we played previously on the channel, was a lot more fun combat-wise because I was actually doing stuff. All I'm doing is clicking and waiting. Which isn't necessarily bad, but it's not... not the best time. But of course, when you're playing with a D&D &D rule set or a D20 rule set, to attack, all you're doing is rolling the die over and over and over. Combat is interesting when it gets into, like, tactics and using spells and abilities and trying to outsmart people, but generally, early play is, or early level play in a lot of role-playing games is a lot of just rolling and rolling and rolling. And it's Dark Jedi! This fight is too much for us! We better stay back! All we do is get in the way! Well, we've seen a couple of cute droids. They've been exploding, but we've seen a couple of... But aliens, yeah, you're right. That always bothered me about Star Wars. That was one it's of all the people. Jedi it's all humans, door. and I get it Damn, because it's used her help. cheaper to costume, but it's kind of weird, right? Oh my god. Hit. For the love of god. Hit. I'm typically not a fan of using grenades because it's just money. I'd rather sell the grenade than use the grenade, but that would take him forever. Vibrations, though. Uh, there's nothing up here, right? Yep, just bodies, bodies. Delightful. On the bridge. No, it's after the bridge. The bridge is just beyond that door. You better equip your melee weapon. There isn't much room on the bridge, and it's suicide to use a blaster in close quarters. I should equip a melee weapon, too. Either that, or I'll have to stay back and use my blaster. Okay. I, I feel like you're right. Um, in that most, uh, most Star Wars movies are pretty good about it, but, like, you think of the main cast of any Star Wars movie, with the exception of, like, fucking... Okay. Chewbacca or Jar Jar. Most of the main characters, and calling Jar Jar a main character is generous, maybe. They're all human. Jesus Christ. 
I am garbage. This is what happens when you put all of your skills into charisma. Miss, miss. Miss, miss. Basto was not here on the bridge. It's horrible. They must have retreated to the escape pods. We better head that way too. The Sith want Basto alive, but once she's off the ship, there's nothing stopping them from blasting the Endar spire into galactic dust. Jesus Christ, this voice actor is not great. So, you may be asking yourself, huh? Why is Alex removing all of this man's clothing? Well, Alex knows that Trascolgo here is not long for this world. Now, there's a cutscene coming up in which he dies valiantly. And I might as well take his stuff off of him because where he's going, he's not gonna need it. I can sell it. Uh. Garbage, garbage. So I can level up. Uh, so there's there's different <laughs> different strategies about leveling up in this game. Either you try to not level up up until you become a Jedi, because then you can take levels in Jedi, which are a lot cooler than levels in Scoundrel, or you play the way the game is designed and acting like you don't know that it's coming up and just level up. Star Trek has a lot of stuff besides man with pointy ears. There's blue man, green man, wizard man, other wizard man, horned man. I, I honestly think Star Trek does a better job than Star Wars when it comes to... Uh, Star Wars gets a lot more fantasy, fantastic with their alien designs, but Star Trek tries to explain why everybody looks like it's a person in a rubber suit. <laughs> They're like, well, of course, because we were all genetically engineered by this precursor species to look this way. This is totally normal that we look this way and definitely not a contrived explanation. Uh, you know, I... What, what comes to mind for me that really highlights how good... How good uh, Star Wars design can be is that classic cantina scene, the Mos Eisley cantina, because it's it's really good. It's your first glimpse here. at this this universe that it's bigger than yes. another dark Jedi. Like all kinds of weird creatures. You get to the escape pods. Go. Playing music in what is called a jizz band. This fucking amazing to me that they decided to call it Jizz Band as the canon name for a popular form of music in the Star Wars universe is come on this is Carthel Nassi on your personal communicator I'm tracking your position through the Endar Spire's life support systems Basilis escape pod is away you're the last surviving crew member on the Endar Spire now I can't wait for you much longer you have to get to the escape pods it's kind of a shitty escape pod if it requires another person to be there to fire it off. Kind of defeats the point. And you're gonna tutorialize sneaking? Maybe I should stick to one. Eh, well, it's, it's kind of working. Kind of working. God, it's painful just seeing like one damage. That's five. That's good. I didn't really explain my processing leveling up when I leveled up our character. Earlier saying core out here. I I'm going for leveling up her skills to make her good at just about everything except for fighting. Because the way that she fights is going to drastically change about halfway through the game. So any development I do to make this better fighting right now will become incredibly worthless. Uh, pretty dumb. It's not entirely true. I could be investing in... It's mostly true. Be careful. There's a whole squad of Sith troopers on the other side of that door. You need to find some way to thin their numbers. You could reprogram the damaged assault droid to help you, if you have enough repair parts. Or you could use computer spikes 
to slice into the terminal and use the Endar Spire security systems against the Sith. Yeah, let's call it slicing. Because, like, it's close to hacking, you know, but we can trademark that shit. And, oh, yeah, no, we don't have hackers in Star Wars. We have slicers. Why? Why? It's so pedantic. It's so needlessly pedantic. All right, uh, yeah, there's some dudes standing in that room. I'm just gonna overload the power conduit in that room. A lot of corpses in that room. Got 150 experience. Hey, combat droid. I'm gonna reactivate the droid. I don't need to. But, I get experience from it. Hello, bodies. You've made it just in time. There's only one active escape pod left. Come on, we can hide out on the planet below. Who are you? I'm a soldier with the Republic, like you. We're the last two crew members left of the Empire Spire. Basilis escape pod's already gone, so there's no reason for us to stick around here and get shot by the Sith. Now, come on. There'll be time for questions later. Okay, yeah, sure. Well, apparently, that's good enough explanation for me. We, isn't it like standard procedure to have enough escape pods in the ship to be able to support the entire crew? Not just like four escape pods. Presumably they're on, you know, both sides of the ship. So eight total? That... This is terrible design. This is the last escape pod and your only hope of survival. Wait on a little thick there. Uh, st <laughs> use the escape pod. I like how this is the portrayal of what it's like to have a bad dream. That's definitely what I look like when I'm having a bad dream. Good to see you up instead of thrashing about in your sleep. You must have been having one hell of a nightmare. I was wondering if you were ever going to wake up. I'm Karth, one of the Republic soldiers from the Endar Spire. I was with you in the escape pod. Do you remember? Uh, right. How did we get here? You're slipping in and out of consciousness for a couple of days now, so I imagine you're pretty confused about things. But try not to worry. We're safe. At least for the moment. We're in an abandoned apartment on the planet of Terrace. I wasn't seriously hurt. I was able to drag you away from our crash site in all the confusion, and I stumbled into this abandoned apartment. By the time the Sith arrived on the scene, we were long gone. So, like, you didn't take me to a hospital? I had a concussion pretty clearly if I were unconscious for that long. Uh, so we're just gonna wait here for rest. The Terrace is under Sith control. Their fleet is orbiting the planet. They've declared martial law, and they've imposed a planet-wide quarantine. I've been in worse spots. What I saw spots? in your service exactly. that you understand a remarkable number of alien languages. <laughs> That's pretty rare in a raw recruit. But it should come in handy while we're stranded on a foreign world. There is no way the Republic will be able to get anyone through the Sith blockade to help us. If we're gonna find Bastila and get off this planet, we can't rely on anybody but ourselves. <laughs> How convenient, player character. You speak all of the languages, so you can talk to whatever alien and it won't be a problem. Isn't this a nice narrative device that we've just hand waved this problem away? Uh, what's so important about Bastila? That smack to your head did more damage than I thought. Bastila's a Jedi. She was with the strike team that killed Darth Revan, Malak's Sith Master. Bastila's the key to the whole Republic war effort. The Sith must have found out that she was on the Endar Spire and set an ambush for us in this system. I believe Bastila was on one of the escape pods that crashed down here in Terrace. For the sake of the Republic war effort, we have to try and find her. 
Uh, uh, where do we start looking? While you were out, I did some scouting around. There are reports of a couple of skate pods crashing down into the Undercity. It's probably a good place to start. But the Undercity's a dangerous place. I don't want to go there unprepared, and it won't do Basil any good if we go and get ourselves killed. I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'll tell you whatever I can, though I'm, I don't know how much help it'll be. Uh, I'd like to know more about you. I understand why you want to know more about me. I, I kind of get the feeling we'll be spending a lot of time together over the next while. But this isn't really the best time for long introductions. We should stay focused on the task at hand. There'll be a time for that later. Uh, what do you know Taurus about this planet? was once a magnificent planet-wide metropolis of towering skyscrapers. But that was a long time ago. The upper city where the rich citizens live is, is still pretty safe. If it wasn't for the Sith occupation and a planet-wide quarantine, it might not even be it a bad place to pretty wide. Those are some pretty down, bulky sho shoulders. The like, lower city is nothing normal but human shoulders would stop, like, right where the yellow is on him. Control. But his just keeps is, going. Let's see. The lowest level of Terrace is a wasteland overrun by rat ghouls. Mindless, diseased mutants that attack on sight. I've already entered all this info into your data pad journal. Excuse you? You stole my phone slash tablet and just added random shit to it? It seems like a little inconsiderate. I, I think his shirt really uh, makes his shoulders look wider too. It... <laughs> This game really doesn't hide its uh, its attempts to uh, portray very uh, circa 2003 idealized figure types like he's masculine so he has wide shoulders and he's built like a fucking square and she's a woman so that means like curves everywhere fucking tight clothes whereas he's bulky bulk 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 yeah uh, let's let's. Get the fuck out Good idea. We can use this abandoned apartment as a base. We can probably get some equipment and supplies here in the upper city. Just remember to keep a low profile. Oh. I've heard some grim stories about the Dark Jedi interrogation techniques. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. But I figure if we don't do anything stupid, we should be okay. I mean, after all, they're, they're looking for Basila, not a couple of grunts like us. All right, soldier. Let's move out. No. Not that I'm not totally pleased that we have this random abandoned apartment that coincidentally has two horrific looking beds. How does one randomly find an apartment? Asks somebody living in a major metropolitan area. Like, how does that just coincidentally happen? Yeah, pardon me. Why? Yeah, I looked out of focus. Here we go. That that doesn't happen. Uh, that yeah. The small so I can see chat. Dope. I wish it were as easy as. Oh look, I stumbled into this empty apartment. That's, truth be told, this is a kind of a shitty apartment. Okay, so we got the bedroom over here, which is just two beds facing each other, which is kind of horrifying. We got. A square over here in the corner. I guess that's a oh, that's a chair. I can't see this on my monitor. This all looks black. I need to raise the gamma here a bit. Like Jesus, why does this look so bad? Cause all of your settings got changed. Right, brightness up. Oh my God, that's better. I can see. What a revelation. All right, exit, exit, exit. Yeah, it comes with a bunch of chairs, some weird-looking, thick-ass tables. All right, all right. Man, who, whose apartment has four armchairs, two beds, and two tables in it? And, you know, a single locker style footlocker thing and a fucking workbench. You can't be cheap. I don't, just, just weird. Throughout the game, you'll find weapons and armors marked as upgradable. These items can be improved by the addition of an upgrade item. With upgrade items, you can use this workbench to construct new, more powerful versions of upgradable range weapons, melee weapons, lightsabers, and armor. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think the apartments in this game were... Well, they're, they're, uh... They're, uh, studios, right? They're just one big room. I'm not gonna upgrade the fiber blade. I'm not gonna use the fiber blade yet. I mean, I, I'm gonna... Fuck it. Alright, prototype fiber blade upgrade item. Add a vibration cell. So this will add one damage bonus to any time we deal damage. That's not bad, actually. Let's go in here. Remove the weapons I'm using. Give me that vibro. Uh, what? Oh, to hit, I have a minus three to hit? Jesus Christ, yeah, dual wielding sucks. Alright, I have a plus one to hit with just this. If I specialize in dual wielding, that might change, but... Dear Lord, not right now. Every time you leave the apartment, you must select which party members you wish to take. Since this is your first time you're leaving, you will have to take Garth. I don't wanna. Garth is a douchebag. Right, you alien scum. Everybody, get up against the wall. This is a raid. You know I'm evil because I have a pseudo-British accent. That's how we sit deep with smart mouth aliens. Now the rest of you, get up against the wall before I lose my temper again. What's this? Humans hiding out with aliens? They're Republic fugitives! Attack! God forbid that I just be like a poor person who can't afford to live in a better apartment. Nope! Humans hanging out with aliens! They must be fugitives! Should have never talked back to that Sith. Thankfully, you were here to step in and help us. Human. Jesus. He talks slowly. This isn't the first time the Sith have come in here to cause trouble for us, but hopefully it will be the last. Um... Won't someone come searching for this patrol? Don't worry about the bodies. I'll move them so it looks like they were killed elsewhere. That should throw the Sith off their track. No. Tracks. Off the track. Off the track? That's not how that expression goes, is it? If any luck, they won't be bothering us again. Yeah, alright. Just let me loot the bodies first. Got a blaster rifle, a bunch of grenades, and some drugs. Cool, thank you. Very helpful. Let's level up again. Oh, great. Skills and nothing. Um, so... Make me better at persuading, make me better at demolitions, make me more aware, better at security, better at repairs. Nope. Oh, uh, less aware, better at computer. Hmm. Hmm. Worse at repairs, better at computer use. Worse at demolitions, better at repairs. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with this. You've gained sneak attack too. Great. <laughs> That'll be useful. Hello, Yanitor. Hey there. What? Well, what? What's where you're walking? I just clean those floors. <laughs> I walk wherever I want, old man. Oh, I get it. You figure that just because I'm a janitor, you don't have to show me any respect. I'm beneath you. Is that it? Yeah, pretty much. You, you'll change your tune the first time your plumbing breaks down and raw sewage floods your apartment. Then you'll be begging for Kadir to come help you out. There's no need to antagonize the man. Besides, do you want to live in filth? I sure don't. Well, we'll see who has the last laugh then. Now, if you ain't gonna be civil, then I got work to do. This place doesn't clean itself, you know. <laughs> You're telling me we go faster than the speed of light. That we have skyscrapers that all look identical to each other, but we haven't automated the fucking process of cleaning a building? You don't have space Roombas? Your job is antiquated, old man. Also, you're like glitching all over the place and it's freaking me out. I'm just... On it. Fuck. Wander into this apartment. See what they have in this. Yep. Yeah. 
Got some money. <laughs> Don't mind me. This is a really weird thing that you do in games like this. Step one, just open every door, Done. take anything that isn't nailed down. Oh, hello there, sir. I'm just going to uh, open up your bag here. Oh, cool. I'm just going to take that. Are you going to protest? Nope, not at all. Please don't hurt me. I have nothing of value in here. Look for yourself and see. In my homeworld, I lived in a splendid castle, but here on this planet, am I forced to hide out in this slum? A human. We do not see many of your. Oh, okay. Apparently, the subtitle is anyway. Hello. Don't hurt me. Just take what you want. I mean, it's a pretty reasonable reaction to breaking into somebody's place. Oh, well, I don't see too many of your kind around here. Most of the residents in this one down old apartment are illegal aliens. Her. My name is Warren, by the way. Yeah, illegal aliens? Because, like, it's 2003 and it's... Uh, still part of the political dialogue that... Um, <laughs> please meet you. No, it's not really, it's none of my business, but you look like someone who might need to purchase one of these new energy shields. That's the latest thing, you know, very high tech. I know all about energy shields. Oh, okay, well then you might be interested in knowing I have one for sale. It's not cheap, but it could be the difference between life and death. I want to see what I have in stock. I know my kiosk isn't much to look at, but my prices are reasonable and the merchandise is sound. Yeah, what do you got for sale? No problem, just step up, take a peek. I'm just gonna sell here and I'm gonna sell all of that, sell this clothing, and a long sword, and the fucking short swords and this blaster pistol and this blaster rifle and all of these grenades and that grenade and these and that and that and that and this and that and just sell the vibro blades because I'm not using them um sell mad packs down to 10 because I don't plan to use them oh, a lot of the aliens sound Russian uh, they they're just speaking uh hoodies I think it's a fake Star Wars language which is really poorly constructed like uh klingon is a very well constructed fictional language as is dothraki very very well constructed hoodies and the other fake star wars languages are some of the most half-ass fake languages out there they're just a random combination of sounds without real syntax or grammar structures and uh, it's kind of silly for me to be punching down at them but <laughs> it, to me it just sounds like noise honestly it's like oh yeah you're just making sounds to make it sound like you're talking but you don't care enough to make a real bank language oh dia uh you're related to Who a quest are you? later what are you on. doing in here you can't just come barging into someone's home uh, I'm just looking for something to steal. Stay out of my way and you won't get hurt. No, I'm sorry. I was just investigating That's no the excuse. area. You can't just go around barging into people's apartments because you're curious. But at least you're more polite than that pig, Holden. Holden? Who dat? Just one of Darvik's men who can't keep his hands to himself. But all he got for his trouble was a nasty scar from my vibroblade. Too bad I'm the one still paying the price. What do you mean, random lady whose apartment I broke into to steal from her? I, I don't want to talk about it. Really? I'm in enough trouble already. Did... Besides, I don't know if I can trust you. You don't want to talk about it, but you're the one who brought it up and explained... I, uh, you can trust me. Maybe I can help. Well, I suppose you seem like an alright sort. When I cut Holden, it made him back off, but it also embarrassed him in front of his friends. Got Holden's a spiteful little hut slug. He went and put <laughs> out a bounty on my head for what I did. That's why I'm hiding out here. Um, anything I can I do? I doubt it. Holden is one of Darvik's men. When you work for the local crime lord, the authorities tend to turn a blind eye. I'm afraid this is between me and Holden now. Maybe I could speak to him. Could try, I guess. He usually hangs out at the cantina in the lower city. 
It probably won't do any good. Holden's used to getting his own way. That's one of the fringe benefits of being a goon for Darvik. Working for the local crime lord lets you get away with things. Still, I appreciate the offer. Alright, I'll be going now, random luck. stranger. I hope you can talk some sense into Holden. Yeah, sure thing, Dia. I... I don't think I'd be quite so polite and asking for help from a random stranger breaking into my apartment. In fact, I know I would not be so kind. <laughs> Especially if they then just turned around and stole whatever I had in my bag. But who cares? Alright. Use weapons that suit your target. Ion damage, very effective against droids. Journal entry added. I'm not gonna read the journal entries. Nothing down there. Oh god. I'm trying to remember what the fuck to do here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something seems to be bothering Karth. Maybe you should speak to him and see if you can get him to open up about it. Uh, fine. Yes, what's on your mind? What's your problem? Me? Well, I've been a star pilot for the Republic for years. I've seen more than a show of wars. I fought in the Mandalorian Wars before all this started. But with all that, I've never experienced anything like the slaughter of these Sith animals can unleash. Not even the Mandalorians were that senseless. My home world was one of the first planets to fall. <laughs> shoulders are too wide. The Sith, yeah, um, his arms Sith don't really they start. The damn they're in no the way connected to stop. his his pets, right? His chest. They're not they're not connected at all. It doesn't feel organic. It just feels like they're like ball joints sitting about 1.5 times as far out as they should. Uh, I'm sorry, this must be very painful for you. I'm just a soldier. You. I go where the fleet admirals tell me to. I follow my orders and I do my duty. It, it, it's just... It doesn't seem right that doing that means that I failed. I, I didn't. Uh, them? Do you mean the people of your homeworld? Yeah, no, I... That's not what I mean. I mean, I... I'm sorry, I'm not making much sense. No. You probably mean well with your questions. I'm just not accustomed to talking about my past very much. At all, actually. You I'm more used the to habit of it. Action, keeping my mind focused on the business at hand. So let's just do that. If you have more questions, ask them later. Ah. Uh, uh, mysterious past. Uh, have a hard time with your feelings and expressing yourself. Man, what a unique and captivating character you are. Kibla, Kibla, you're. Hello there. I haven't seen you in my shop before. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kebla Yurt. Kebla. Welcome to the Equipment Emporium. You well. looking to buy some supplies? My shop's the largest one in all of Upper Terrace. Best selection on the planet. Whatever you need, I've got. Well, mostly. Mostly? What do you mean by that? The Sith confiscated all my heavy weapons and they impounded all my ships and swoop bikes. But I've still got a real nice selection, if you're interested. <laughs> no ships and heavy weapons? What good are you? Uh, just so you know, the prices on the items are our final. No bargaining here. This isn't a swap meet, okay? I only deal in top-notch stuff. Yeah, I, it makes sense to me to buy better armor, and I think Bondin alloy heavy suit is probably the best thing I can buy at this point in the game. Well, no. This is better, but I can't wear... I think... Actually, military suit because of my bad dexterity is just as good as the Bondin alloy heavy suit. And I'm currently wearing white armor, and it might be worth upgrading. This is 3 to 13 plus 1 attack modifier. This seems pretty good, Ichani Ritual Band. This is not customizable, but it seems pretty good. Double bladed sword seems pretty good. Does, does it tell you if it's upgradable? Special, upgradable. Yeah, okay, so this has a bonus to damage. 1 to 10 damage, plus 2, it's upgradable. But it has a no penalty Look. or no bonus to hit whereas this is a 3 to 13 so that's already more damage lower crit threat range but it has an attack modifier plus one so yeah 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 so, okay i have a plus two to hit i have a minus one fudge all right 
I will want to use this later once I spec into using it, but not right now, apparently. Not right now. I was wrong. Uh, actually, why am I at it? Key, what, what, what do I have for defense? Nah, let's, let's get better armor, because I'm going to be wearing it for a while. Welcome. Yes, hello. Um, military suit. Bond and heavy alloy is better, but oh, this is medium. Fuck. Who needs med packs? Uh, selling computer parts and spikes is like a cardinal sin in this game, so I won't be doing it. I can't afford this because I made the mistake of buying this. Let's just sell this back and pretend that didn't happen. Yeah, I'll just buy that. Just don't talk to me. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I should have removed the combat suit and equipped that. Ah, oh, but Karth isn't wearing anything, so let's give him the combat suit and this back to me. Look at how red and ugly this thing is. Then we sell the clothing for... Ah, oh, nothing. Great. Jesus Christ, this is red. Red and shiny. Oh, I thought the guard at the door would stop me, but nope. Oh, God. All right, Niklos, introduce me to Pazak. Body long. Have you come here just to bother me, or do you wish to test yourself against the best Pazak player on Taurus? <laughs> <laughs> I want to play, but I don't have a deck. Have own deck. Then why are you bothering me? You can't play Pazak without your own deck, if you're serious about Pazak. Go speak to old Garok on the other side of the tavern. His gambling days are over, and uh, he's looking to sell his deck. Uh, on the other side of the tavern? You mean on the other side of the room? Because the other side of the tavern would be over there somewhere. But no, uh, yeah, other, other side of the tavern, Hello sure. there, youngster. You interested in buying the Pazak deck of an old man looking to get out of the gambling game? Just 50 credits, and I'll <laughs> sell you all my cards. I'll even throw in a free lesson to book. It's a great deal, if you can afford it. I'll buy the deck. Glad to see you're interested in the grand old game. It's a terrible the rules game. are pretty simple. Here, I'll load them up into your data pad so you can check them out anytime you want. It's overly good complicated luck. blackjack. I hope the game's as good to you as it was to me. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Nope. No. Yo. Niklos. I saw you getting a Pazak lesson from that old fossil. <laughs> Did you? Because it didn't happen. Learning the rules of Pazak is easy, but actually playing the game is a much greater challenge. I remember this guy I cheats. Bother with a novice like you. But since Gerud was banned for hustling cards, I haven't been able to find a good game around here. Do you wish to play a hand? Tell him you want holographic Charizard. No deal. Uh, I'm not if interested right now because I want to save. Save scum. Uh, I saw you getting yeah, it yeah, normally. Yeah, yeah. I would. yeah, let's play. I'm going to enjoy relieving you of your credits almost as much as I'm going to enjoy humiliating you. <laughs> ha ha ha. Okay, let's wager all 13 of my credits. You have to build your deck, which, uh, done. Yep. So, the way it works is you're dealt yellow cards every turn. You can then play a card from your hand to modify the value. You want this to be 20 or under 20. If you go over 20, you lose. It's shitty two-player blackjack. Uh, 14 is terrible and will not win. Great. If... It comes in three phases. Oh, fuck. Magic gotta be to 19. It's 19. Not a big deal. So I played a plus one there to raise our total to 20. Us being at 20 beats their 19. We win the set. Alright, they're gonna stay at 19. 
I'm gonna get a 21 and just lose. So often this game is infuriating because there's some strategy involved, but the AI doesn't play like a fuck. No, nope, we just lose. The AI doesn't play like a normal human and just stays unless they get a 18, 19, or 20. You're playing blackjack and you get a 16, typically you want to stop. Alright, goodbye. If you ever wish to test your Yeah. But later on we'll get cards with worth negative values and those will be worth taking Sorry, advantage of. I'm not here looking for conversation. I just came to get a drink, listen to some music, and try to relax before my next shift at the military base. You're from the military base, you don't look like one of the Sith. I don't wear my uniform when I'm off duty. It's not allowed. In fact, anyone in uniform is banned from entering the cantina. The officers don't even like it when we show up here off duty. They don't like us fraternizing with the locals, I guess. But it gets pretty stale hanging around the base all the time. Besides, the Sith don't own me. Being a soldier in their fleet is just a job, you know. A job with long hours and low pay, I might add. Sounds like you aren't very happy. When I signed up, I was promised adventure and excitement in exotic locales. Go conquer the galaxy! I was stationed at a military base on some backwater planet on the fringes of the galaxy. If I could just find some other way to earn some credits, I could give this lousy job up. Retire my uniform, so to speak. I have some lewd suggestions. Uh, can I ask you some questions? Senior officers don't really like it when we start answering questions, you know? They don't want us fraternizing with the locals. Just another perk of the job. No offense, but I probably shouldn't be talking to you anymore. I'm just going to say something that might get me in trouble. Parisian no What? Why are you speaking to me? Can't you tell from my clothing that I'm of the nobility? Get away from me. I can't be seen talking with a common <laughs> rabble. You wouldn't be proper for a man of my standing. We live in a post-scarcity society where we can travel from one star to the next as if it were nothing. Clearly, you can tell my social standing by something as arbitrary as the clothes that I'm wearing. Fashion never loses value. What? Star Wars. Fucking Star Wars. All right. Well, hello there. Fuck off, Jerry. I can see your exotic appearance that you are not from Taurus originally. <laughs> exotic I'm appearance? Introduce myself. Racist. My name is Jergen. What do you want? What do you think of our local music? The band is quite good, wouldn't you agree? They're on the verge of intergalactic stardom, you know. Hmm. I don't care much for the band. There's something of an acquired taste, but mark my words, they'll be famous soon enough. They were about to go on tour before the Sith quarantine stranded them here. Would you like to meet the band after the show? Maybe have a brief brush with fame before they become intergalactic superstars? I can arrange it, you know. <clears throat> Is this a thing that happens? I've been to so many shows. So many concerts, and I've never got the whole... I happen to know the band, so if you pay me like $200, we could go backstage and meet them. Never happened to me. And I've been to a lot of shitty shows. Uh, I'll pass. Are you certain? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Meet the legends before they were famous. All it will cost you is a small handful of credits. No, they see... had a standing arrangement with one of the Rodian bodyguards backstage. For the small sum of 20 credits, he'll let me set up a meeting with you and the band. Sounds like you're running a scam. You sting me with your words. I merely thought I could offer you the rare opportunity to meet a celebrity before they were famous. But I see you're not interested. That's too bad. They really are charming fellows. Very well, then. I hope you enjoy the music. Mm. If you change your mind, come speak with me again. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe that would work better on a different type of person, but... Celebrity has never really frazzled me very much. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. Of course, they don't give us Sith officers from the military base much time off. So this is a weird thing. Um, he, like the character we were just talking to before, I can let you meet the band guy, plays a mechanical role, narratively. He's a Sith officer. She's a Sith officer. You talk to them, you get in their good graces, you go back to wherever they live and at a party, and you steal their armor because you need it as a disguise. 
what's really weird is Bioware spent the time and money making two different characters that both serve the thing, same function. The only limitation is the gender that you chose. So if you're playing as a female character, you cannot woo the female Sith officer. But you can woo the male Sith officer. Whereas if you're playing a male character, it's inverted. But fucking why? Like, it, instead of having the, you, you know, it was a much more homophobic time, uh, the early 2000s, but, come on, it's, you don't even need to make it vaguely romantic or sexual, you could just make it, like, a laid-back encounter, like, oh, hey, you seem cool, you should come hang out with some of my friends at a party I'm going to later on. Either, don't, don't need to complicate it. Instead, they spent twice as much on voice actors, or voice act, voice recording time, twice as much in character models and on writing. It, it, this, is, this is dumb. Uh, you don't look like one of the city right now, so I'm not in uniform. My name is Yun Genda, junior officer first class with the Sith Occupation Force. You got some real weird facial hair going on. Uh, nice to meet you. Actually, a little surprised you're talking to me at all. Most of the people here on Terrace can't stand us Sith. It can make us a pretty lonely job. <laughs> lonely job, you say? Well, you're just doing your job, right? I don't hold that against you, collaborator. That's true. But people don't appreciate what we've done for them. We could have slapped a curfew on this whole planet, but we didn't. You know, it's like everyone on this backwater planet is in a permanent bad mood. Don't they know they have to make the best of things? You should be grateful that we didn't hurt you more. I uh, have spoken like a true abuser. Uh, everybody has their ups and downs. It's how we deal with it that counts. Exactly. It's all about attitude. I didn't ask to be assigned to this backwater planet, but I tried to make the best of it. It's pretty easy to get depressed on an assignment like this, but we do what we can to keep our spirits up. Uh-huh. Uh, you need to blow off steam once in a while. That's true. It's nice to meet someone who understands what I'm going through. It's good to talk about this stuff. It gets pretty lonely at the military base. I have to get going soon. I've got a shift at the military base. But some of us junior Sith officers are having a party lately to blow off some steam. I'd really like to see you again. Why don't you drop by the party? I'll show you where it is on your map. Okay, so very vague, very slight romantic undertone aside, there's no reason why there needed to be two different characters playing the same role, just depending on your gender. I, I guess it's kind of cool at the time, like, oh, if you play a man, you'll have this story, but if you play a woman, you'll have a slightly different story. Isn't that cool? There's consequences for your actions, but like, why? He doesn't look like he's really like to see you again. Yeah, true. Sounds good. I'll be Don't there. Be late. We're starting right after our shifts in. Most of us won't even be going back to the base to lock up our uniforms. Hint. I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, it's been an hour. So, hour one complete. I'm gonna cut the recording here. I'm gonna keep streaming until at least midnight tonight, maybe longer. But if you're watching on YouTube, stop by again tomorrow for more of this. Uh, in the meantime, make sure to comment, share, like, subscribe, hit the fucking bell button because YouTube is so convoluted and complicated that you can like a video and subscribe to someone but still not get notifications about when they post new shit because that makes so much sense. It's dumb. Uh, yeah, yeah, tomorrow.